Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a wavy line gravity dye. I really have been having a lot of fun doing the gravity ice dyes. Each one of them turns out so unique and it's a great way to show off the color splits of a dye color. So to start, I have the shirt turned inside out and I'm just gonna draw a wavy line on the shirt. You can make this any size, any pattern, whatever you want. Then I'm going to fan fold the line and tie it with some sinew. This is a pretty wide line and sometimes it's a little difficult to get a really wide line like this tied tightly with sinew without it buckling. So for this design it really doesn't matter if it buckles. I mean it doesn't have to be perfect. But to try to avoid the buckling I'm wrapping the sinew around a couple of times and then I'm holding my hand flat on top of the sinew as I pull it tight. And I'm kind of pulling it slow. I keep turning the shirt over just to make sure it's not buckling or folding in on itself on the back side. I straightened it just a little bit because the folds were trying to fold in on themselves a little. Like I said, for this design it doesn't really matter. The line doesn't have to be perfectly white. I just want some sort of a dividing line that's pretty severe between both sides of the shirt. The setup that I'm using on this shirt is a metal drying rack. And then I've placed a piece of vinyl guttering on top of the drying rack upside down so that the flat side is up. Then I'm going to place the sinew line of the shirt right down the middle of the guttering. And before I begin applying the dye, I'm going to gently spray it with a little bit of soda ash solution just to help the dye stick a little better to the top of the fabric. I'm going to apply the dye in stripes going across the sinew line. So I want a little bit of the color on both sides of that sinew line. I'm starting with Heads or Teals, which was a special muck color from Dharma in 2022, so I don't think it's available any longer. Then I'm doing Celadon from Dharma, followed by Teal Blue from Dye Spin, Kingfisher from Dharma, and a little bit of Crappy Scrappy from Grateful Dyes. That too was like a special color that they had, just for a limited time. Then I'm going to add some additional dry soda ash over the top of the die and add on a large chunk of ice that I made in a disposable container. I found that the larger chunks of ice melt slower and I like the result of that a little bit better just simply because it's easier to keep the ice on top of the shirt and I don't have to replace the ice as often. Believe it or not, even though it's fall here, it has still been in the 90s, so the smaller chunks of ice just melt really fast. I've included some process photos of how the ice melted and the dye moved down the shirt. I'm not entirely sure that this piece of ground is really level or flat where I'm doing this, so about halfway through, I turned the dyeing rack around because it seemed like one side of the shirt, the dye was moving down a little quicker than the other side. The very last photo is a picture of my entire setup so that you can see it a little bit better. Most of the other photos are zoomed in and you can't see the whole thing. By the way, after the large chunk of ice melted, 
The dye still wasn't all the way down to the very outer edges of the shirt, so I added some more ice. I added another large chunk of ice, and then I ended up adding a couple of the two inch cubes of ice that I make. There was still dye left sitting on top because I added quite a bit of dye, and so I could just continue adding ice. I want to make sure that I have plenty of ice to get that dye all the way down to the very bottom part of the shirt. Once the dye got all the way down the shirt to the very outer edges, I went ahead and put it inside of a container that has a metal rack down in the bottom, put the lid on the container, and I left it outside in the heat. That will allow the shirt to process for a longer amount of time without drying out. These damp shirts, when you put them in those containers out in the heat, it gets really steamy and hot inside there and the colors end up nice and vibrant. All in all, I left the shirt for probably about 18 hours. Then I took it to my utility sink and I began rinsing it in cold water like normal. I rinse in the cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I untied the shirt and warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to try to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. This is one of those color palettes that's a little bit more difficult to rinse out. So instead of just continuing to rinse, I added some really hot water to my utility sink along with a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent. And then I just allowed the shirt to soak. When the water cooled off, I changed it out and continued that process until the water was almost clear. Then I put the shirt along with some of Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so the shirt has been washed and dried and ironed and this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one looks really pretty. I really like this technique. I just like the way the line is real rigid and then all of the dye just kind of flows or just bleeds away from that middle line. I just love that dye movement. So that's the reason why I just really, really, really like these gravity dyes. The dye movement on these is just awesome. I like the colors too. I think they go really well together and I like the darkness up next to the line. All the colors that I chose on this shirt were fairly similar. I mean, there's not a huge difference between them. They're all kind of in that same color family, which is what I was going for. I wanted a blue shirt or kind of an aqua colored shirt, but several of the colors have some cool color splits or color variations that are coming out. And where you see that the most is right up next to that line. And I think that's a cool effect on the shirt. There are a few weird little colors that showed up. Like on the back of the shirt, I have one yellow dot, almost like right on the spine. And that's kind of a little bit odd. And then there is a little bit of undissolved dye on the front, kind of rolling around to the back, lower portion of the shirt. It's really tough with this design not to end up with a few speckles, especially where I live because the wind blows so much that even if you could potentially do and place your dye just absolutely perfectly on the shirt, odds are pretty high that the wind's gonna blow it where you didn't want it to go. But that really doesn't bother me that bad. I don't notice that so much. My eye goes immediately to that line and the cool dye movement going away from that line. I've included the side photos on the mannequin because I want you to see that I think this shirt looks great from every angle. I just think it's a really pretty shirt. But what do you guys think? Drop me some comments down below and let me know. And is there a particular design that you're curious whether or not can be gravity dyed? I've tried quite a few designs and I've been trying to do most of my gravity dyeing while the weather's still warm. I don't really want to do this technique inside. I think it would maybe just get a little too messy. I know some people do, but I'm just not that daring. So if you guys have enjoyed watching me experiment with this and gravity dye this shirt, I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.